Now I've been testing golf clubs for nearly six years now. There's been some pretty incredible innovations that have made golf a lot easier for many golfers. But I'll also say there's been a lot of things that I've come across that most golfers should not go anywhere near. That is, of course, you like making the game a little bit more difficult. And believe it or not, I think there's a lot of golfers that do like making this game as difficult as possible. But in today's video, what I'm gonna to attempt to do is this. I'm gonna show you five products that you should throw out of your golf bag immediately. That's if you have them in at least. And I'm gonna show you the five things you should replace them with to make this game a whole lot easier. And then at the very end, there's one little bonus ball that I'm gonna throw into the mix. I'm going to kick things off at the top end of the bag. With driver, I'm not going to suggest what driver you use, but I am going to suggest that you seriously have a look at the length of shaft that you've got in your driver. This is the Callaway Mini Driver. It's a 44 and a half inch long shaft. And all I would say is the first thing you need to do, if you've got a driver shaft that's between 45 and 46 inches long, which is pretty much standard right now, you should consider throwing that out and replacing it with something that is a maximum 44 and a half inches long. There is no doubt that over the last few years, I have found that more center strikes are found with a shorter shaft in hand. Therefore, I've always got more ball speed, I've got greater control, and my driver performance stats have increased massively, as well as my confidence with that long end of the bag. So whatever you're doing right now, if your driver game ain't working, the first thing to look at, how long is that shaft? If it's over 44 and a half inches long, which I bet it is, then get it in the bin and try something a bit shorter. Get up, get up. Ah, just about good enough. I'm gonna go to the opposite end of the bag. And the short game where a lot of people can struggle and lose a lot of shots. And the first thing I want you to look at is what kind of wedges have you got in the bag? The first thing I would say, if you've got anything that's above sort of 58, 60, then that's time to put them into the bin because they're a waste of space. The next thing I want you to have a look at is are you carrying a blade-like wedge or are you carrying a game improvement like wedge? I've done a lot on these uh, Cleveland CBX wedges. This is a CBX4. Why is it so effective? It's the super wide sole and it's the amount of bounce that is on that sole. It's also a much bigger profile than the blade-like wedges that I refer to that are quite lightly in your bag. And there's loads of difference between this wedge and another in terms of that help, that stability, and the ability to get your ball from this kind of position onto the green and stop dropping shots. It is what I would describe as a game improvement wedge. Like I said, it's bulk, it's mass, it's that width of sole that helps you out massively, and it's also that bounce element as well. So whatever you do, check out your wedges. 58, 60 wedges, like your is, put them in the bin, they're a waste of space anyway. Have a look at the width of sole, have a look at the bounce you've got on it, and have a look at a CBX light wedge. It doesn't have to be, it's not brand specific, none of this, by the way. It doesn't have to be Cleveland, but have a look at that width of sole and making sure you're helping yourself. When you dig in, it just slides across the turf a little bit better so you don't fat things. And by the same token, thinning it just becomes uh, that little bit less of an option. So that's wedges out the bag. Let's go on to the green and talk about what putter you've got. So for many, many years, I've used one style of putter. Not necessarily the same brand, but I've used one style of putter, and that is a mallet. Now, what a mallet does and why it should be a deep consideration in putting into your bag is as perimeter weighting, it stays very stable and there is less torque in this kind of putter. Now, I'm going to go over to the bag and I'm going to get the opposite end of the spectrum. I've got a lot of clubs in the bag that we're looking at this morning. And if you've got anything that looks like this, which is a blade putter, traditional blade putter, absolutely stunning piece of kit. If I reviewed that, I would say just how nice it is, just how good it comes off the club face. And again, traditionally, these type of putters will have a lot of, if I can just get that balance, a lot of toe hang. And what that effectively means is that it's not very stable. And it means that you're going to have to rotate that club face a little bit to get it square through impact. So, the two putters are very, very different, and in technology-wise, they're supposed to suit different types of swing types, putting swing types, that is, obviously. 
But what I would say is quite simply, we're trying to keep this game as simple as possible. So for me, for most golfers, a mallet style putter with plenty of perimeter weighting that just keeps that club head as square with as less torque as possible face balance putter that's the kind of route you should be going down and if you really feel like pushing a boat out and you're willing to look at the expense you know i'm a massive fan of the lab theory and the way those putters are weighted which is zero torque is just a further example of how mallet style putters are hugely beneficial to most average golfers so go and check out your putter if you're struggling maybe it's time to ditch the blade and the ego and have a look at something that is a little bit more and just check out who switched of late scotty scheffler even has gone away from the traditional blade rory mcelroy's gone away from the blade all these players what xander chauffley just won with at the weekend they're all in mallet style putters where a few years ago all those pros were carrying blades they're realizing they don't need to make it as difficult as it is. I still couldn't hold a putt, mind. Right, here's the next part of the problem. We've got a short par four here at Hollywell. I don't need driver. It starts to get really tight up there. So I'm looking for a club ID that it goes around that sort of 200 yard mark. 180 to 200. And that becomes a difficult part of the game. I've done plenty of videos where I've said about uh, long irons and how we really struggle to generate enough club head speed to get the benefits out of them. So what I'm saying to you, if you've got a two, three or a four iron, get them out of your bag. Stick them on eBay now and get them swapped in for something like your options are you need to be looking at hybrids or you're looking at seven woods. You're looking at possibly nine woods. You're looking at clubs that, again, make this game a whole lot easier than standing over a ball when you're looking at a three or a four iron or, like I said, for some of you, even a five iron. Something with a bit of bulk and mass is going to help the loss in the ball speed that you've got because of your club head speed, you've got a little bit, uh, we're not quick enough. That bulk and mass that a fairway wood or a hybrid will provide will give you that extra launch, extra ball speed and get your confidence boosted at the same time. So long irons out, hybrids or fairway woods back in. Next two clubs in the bag are at the long end of the bag. I've done this video many, many times and I've suggested that uh, it generally goes with a title like 99% of golfers uh, should not use this club and it is a three wood. There's two reasons why you shouldn't use a three wood. One is goes back to that club head speed situation and the less or the, the lesser loft than what I'm going to suggest you use means a bit of a problem. And the second is versatility. It tends to be a club in the bag that most people only use as an alternative option from the tee instead of the driver and it's a really hard club to use from the fairway. So for me, you can't do a great deal with it either. It collects cobwebs. Even that sheep doesn't like it. He's doing my head in, by the way. The next thing is what do you replace it with? And it's a five wood. A five wood, effectively for me, goes the same distance pretty much off the tee with a better high launching ball. And I won't use a, lose a lot of difference in terms of yardage as a tee shot alternative. But where this one trumps this completely is its versatility. Because when I get down on the fairway on a par five, I'd much rather grab a five wood with plenty of loft on it than I would try and hit a three wood from the same position. And I reckon every test that we've done has clearly demonstrated that that to be without doubt the case. So if you've got a three wood in the bag, first thing to say, how often do you use it? If you're not using it very much, then consider putting it out and getting yourself a five wood in the bag or at least trying one and I bet you you get better results and you use this club far more than you will do your three wood. And my final nugget of information is stop using a range finder or certainly stop using the distance to the flag and start using a GPS device and concentrate on the middle or even the back yardage to the green. Why do I say that? Well, because nine times out of 10, you and I both know that when you use this thing, you generally come up short of the flag. We're also not accurate enough to use those kind of distances and a much better option is to aim for the center or back of the green in terms of the club you select, because like I said, that generally will negate yours and I misconception that we think we hit the ball further than we actually do. So. I'm not saying don't ever use one of these things, but if you can afford it and there's some cheap devices out there, whether it be a watch, this kind of gadget, GPS devices, using center to back of the green is another good option 
and where you'll start to lower scores and get the ball pin high a little more often. Right, so a few days later on, and uh, what we realized is I forgot to film an ending, but the basis is quite simple. These uh, ideas are gonna suit not everybody, but certainly help quite a few. So take them on their own merits, try them yourself, and hopefully they make your golf game a little bit more enjoyable. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.